Hi everyone here and around the world. I really pray that all of you experience more peace and fun in this end of year holiday on this troubled planet. I do have some good news that we have broken through 224,000 subscribers this week at the Earth Files YouTube channel. So my deep thanks to new subscribers and to all of you who have been here Wednesday nights live the past five years. Earth Files news keeps evolving about UFOs, UAPs, non-human intelligences, Earth life struggling with diseases, wars, and climate change. And then there are the increasing revelations about our universe that are coming from several great telescopes, such as a mysterious blast of light is a black hole pointing straight at Earth scientists, say in research, released in the November 30th Nature Astronomy. The UK University of Birmingham astronomers use data from the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope. So what is happening? Their animation shows an incredibly bright X-ray, optical, and radio signal blasting from halfway across this universe, from eight and a half billion light years away, the farthest such blast has ever been detected. Scientists say a star is, quote, squeezed like a toothpaste tube by a supermassive black hole during what is called a tidal disruption event, or TDE, close quote. As the huge black hole swallows the star, solar material spurts outward in two directions, producing one of the most violent cosmic events known to Earth scientists, who rarely see such star and black hole violence in the cosmos. When the scientists aimed an X-ray telescope on the extremely bright event, they determined that the source was 100 times more powerful than the most powerful gamma ray burst afterglow that human scientists have ever seen. Another recent headline is, quote, the Southern Hemisphere's largest new radio telescope joins the Breakthrough Listen project that is searching for extraterrestrial technology, close quote. The South African Radio Astronomy Observatory's Meerkat radio telescope is made up of 64 satellite dishes. Each stands 65 feet tall. The dishes are connected across five miles of dry land in very remote Carner Vaughan, South Africa, 390 miles northeast of Cape Town. Meerkat will increase the number of star targets that Breakthrough Listen can observe by a factor of a thousand. Their goal is to seek signs of intelligent extraterrestrial life including techno signatures, engineered signals that would indicate the existence of technologies in life on other planets beyond Earth. The new Meerkat radio telescope is said to be the most powerful instrument ever built to search for techno signatures and their implication, intelligent life and consciousness. What is different about Meerkat is that there's no need to physically move its antennas. Its 64 dishes can monitor a very large sky area and scan 64 objects at once. One of Meerkat's targets will be Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. The reason is that in 2020, Breakthrough Listen detected an odd radio signal coming from Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our sun and a member of the Alpha Centauri solar system. Breakthrough Listen scientists say that Meerkat will be able to search over one million stars in our interstellar neighborhood in only two years. Meerkat is so sensitive, it will be able to detect a transmitter like Earth's brightest radio beacons out to a distance of 250 light years. Meanwhile, a Defense Intelligence Agency analyst retiring after 23 years of studying the presence of non-human intelligences on Earth told me in December of 1999 that our U.S. government has proof that 270 million years ago, 
there were three different extraterrestrial groups fighting with each other over control of this beautiful watery earth filled with so many different life forms. Since World War II, the number of UFO sightings and human abduction reports increased to the point that on February 15, 1992, Dr. John E. Mack, MD, a professor of psychiatry at the Harvard Medical School, contributed his expertise to a Roper survey funded by the Robert Bigelow Holding Corporation in Las Vegas. The survey was conducted from July to September of 1991. One of the Roper survey conclusions was that the number of UFO abduction experiencers appears to be at least 2% of the population. In today's 2022 United States population of 335 million people, 2% is more than 6 million. Dr. Mack wrote in the 1991 Roper poll, quote, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of American men, women, and children may have experienced UFO abductions or abduction-related phenomena, close quote, Dr. John Mack, Professor of Psychiatry at the Harvard Medical School, February 15, 1992, and author of Abduction, Human Encounters with Aliens, copyright 1994. That was three decades ago. Since then, I have interviewed hundreds of people who have described face-to-face -face encounters with several different types of non-humans. But as the defense intelligence analyst told me in December of 1999, the three primary extraterrestrial species competing with each other about Earth are gray-colored humanoids who have an enlarged back of their head. Their large eyes can be cat-like, with a large vertical pupil surrounded by a pale or gold-colored iris. Those are one type among many different gray types that come in different heights, from five to six to seven to eight feet tall, and as small as two to three or four feet tall. Those smaller entities are described as entirely artificial intelligence created to work for the taller grays. Another group described by some government, military, and aerospace sources as perhaps our closest genetic progenitors on Earth are the blonde, blue-eyed Nordics. Abductees say the Nordics are indistinguishable from human populations in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, and Finland. Nordics have also been described to me as serious warriors against a third and fourth type of alien species involved with Earth, the reptilian humanoids and the dangerous insect tronoloids. Other alien humanoids often described by people in the abduction syndrome are eight to 10 foot tall whites who are described as extremely advanced overseers of Earth in some kind of collaboration with the Nordics against the re reptilians and the tronoloid insects. The various gray types seem to play all sides. A year ago in February 2021, at Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles, I had a meeting with Gaia's executive producer, Sid Goldberg from Louisville, Colorado. He pulled out his cell phone and showed me a photo of a brown haired man named Tim, who has never given a last name but Sid said Tim worked as a private contractor and tactical advisor in a co covert German government operation similar to the American Lockheed Skunk Works, accessible only by top secret special access program. His job was to analyze various strategies connected to extraterrestrial groups in contact with Earth. Sid told me Tim was born in Western Germany in the 1980s and evolved as a good student who studied what was behind political control in the Middle Ages by Templars. Historically, Templars are described as German Christians, some with blonde hair and blue eyes. According to Tim, 
His Templar research led to a German government recruitment of him at a university to participate as a private subcontractor in a German government top secret institute related to communications, active communications, with extraterrestrial entities interacting with Earth. The Knights Templar were a Catholic military order in Western Christianity nearly a thousand years ago from 1119 to 1312. Although the Templars were active military rather than a praying religious order, the Templars wore large red crosses to represent martyrdom and the sacrifice of Christ. They focused their lives on serving God with prayers repeated at fixed times during the day. The Templars had a war flag called the Busion. The flag had a solid black section above a solid white section. Did the black depict evil and the white symbolize pure goodness that echoes through the centuries like the much older black and white yin and yang symbol of 3,500 years ago in the I Ching. Whatever the truth, the Busian held a lot of power. Knights were not allowed to retreat or stop fighting if the flag was still flying. Tim's university study of the controlling role that the Templars had on the Middle Ages is what allegedly interested the overseers of the secret German government project with the extraterrestrial biological entities known as greys. Sid asked me if I could interview Tim in a new Truth Hunter series at Gaia to be produced in the Gaia Studios in Louisville, Colorado, near Boulder in March of 2022. That series of eight new programs began broadcasting in October 2022, and you can see them by going to this link for all of the new Truth Hunter series with Tim from Germany and with me. And that link is Gaia.com slash Earthfiles. For two days on cameras in March of 2022, Tim and I talked about gray extraterrestrials, other dimensions, other types of ET beings. And tonight here on the Earth Files YouTube channel, I want to share with you a segment from a private audio interview that I did with Tim later on August 13th about his first meeting with a gray extraterrestrial. Could you talk now about what it is like in your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body, to be close to one of the grays and having communication whether telepathic or however you're seeing movies in your head or whatever, about your first time where you were really close to a gray? Yes. It's frightening. It's traumatic. First time ever was inside of a facility that has squared boxes in them, all metallic, used for direct contact. The human brain picks up on patterns all the time, and when these patterns that are unfamiliar, the human brain goes into a state of emergency. This is why the lights were dimmed, so that the brain and sensory organs do not pick up too much information. When you are in contact with a gray face-to-face, -face, there is a very particular, frightening aura or sensory overload, a weird sensory element which makes your body very alert. Imagine you're in a spot and you feel observed and you have this kind of weird anxiety that runs down your spine and makes you want to get away as soon as possible, makes you very uncomfortable. Then you have the feeling that you have when you're inside the room with this being. So it's very strong, weird energy coming from that being. It's really disturbing, traumatizing. And even though the first meetings were just standing there, didn't move at all, didn't say anything, I didn't have any kind of communication. It's 
feels like you either want to run away or collapse because you feel like your reality is breaking rapidly. And when you finally reached a point where the gray thought that you could communicate or it could communicate with you telepathically, can you describe that experience in detail? Yes. So I've never, ever reached a point where I would say that this feeling of anxiety went away. Never, ever. The same intense feeling of fear every time. But you get used to it because after some time you realize that there are protocols and the beings, whether it's one or uh, up to three in the same room, would not move or do anything that harms me at all. The first few times it was just standing there and communication was slowly introduced into that conversation, and mostly through a technology that looked like a glass tablet that had two displays on it. It was glass all the way through, and it had displays on it. One shows the grave and one display that gives a translation to that language, which wasn't always correct at certain times. It sounded correctly, but it didn't make any sense. So that were the moments where we need some time to figure out what the grave were actually saying and meaning. Now, You've had how many years of interaction with the gray beings? Um, I have more than about 11 years of experience in total with different non-terrestrial sources and information. In those 11 years, which type have you communicated with the most? I would say the grays, and it's the particular being that I translated as being six, which is a being at the frequency or the consciousness level of six consciousness. Of the greys, what would you say is your understanding of what the greys want with Earth and humans? This is one of the most important questions that we've had. What's their intention? What do they want? Do they want to take over the planet Earth? And they made it very clear that they have no attention at all of getting their hands on the planet itself. They do not want to take that over. Actually, they were kind of shocked about that because they say this planet Earth has such a raw and vast place with winds and floods and pollution and all these kind of weird dynamics going on that they would say they would never, ever choose a planet like this for their home base. Their planet in the Orion system, but also live on different artificial crafts. Their planet is sterile. They do not have natural catastrophes. There is no dust, no sand, nothing, no pollution, no dirt. And it's, it has its own light source, which is kind of weird. So the planet itself irradiates light. It doesn't need an outside light source. So they made that pretty clear that they do not want Earth's planet itself. What they want is they understand that they only can evolve further if the universe as a big, big organism evolves. So that is what they want. They want the universe to evolve. They call themselves this particular race that we call the grace. They call themselves a gardening race. They say the universe itself could flourish in a wild way. Everything could grow very wildly or tonal dynamic. They want to preserve the tonal dynamic which was one of the you know expressions that we had to investigate further because we didn't understand at that time. The tonal dynamic means that beings are on a certain path for their own evolution called soul way. Beings have a certain path that they're on, which they are interested in, 
and the Greys want to make sure that they have every right and every possibility to proceed with that particular path so they can evolve and the mass of all beings throughout the universe, the whole universe as an organism can evolve. And they do that in a very large scale. They even offer administrative services to whole galaxies and star systems. I have been told by a man who has worked for 33 years in an aerospace company, all related to the evolution of advanced technologies that we have back-engineered from UFO technology. And Mm -hmm. he said, I understand that humanity, Homo sapiens sapien, is the product of genetic manipulation and the insertion of genes from the tall whites, Nordics, and the orange grays. Yeah, I can confirm that this species on this particular planet, what you call Homo sapiens sapiens, that this is indeed a genetically modified species. And we know that at least a dozen, maybe even more species have left their extensive fingerprints in the genetic code of the human. What do you, at this point, in your mind's eye, when you look into the future from all of your interactions with these two or three different beings and knowing that we're in a universe that is teeming with intelligence, what do you see coming in the distant future for Earth? Are humans going to be allowed to self-destruct? and a whole other species replace us here? The Greys have communicated to us at least 15 years ago that Earth itself has certain cycles, cycles of existence, and there has been a version of this Earth that inhabited different civilizations that are all gone now, and you talked about South America in particular, and we know for at least 15 years, that this cycle of this Earth might come to an end. We talked about that, and you quoted one, I think, general or someone who has said the same thing. And this is why all these species are looking upon Earth and humanity, because they have their own agendas on helping or guiding or harvesting inhabitants of this planet and integrating them into their own species or, as the greys would do, so that their soul dynamic, their soul plan can be fulfilled. Hey, and I want you all to know that this Earth Files YouTube channel is now available on podcast. New episodes are released every Thursday after the live Earth Files broadcasts, like tomorrow. So go to podcast.earthfiles.com or search for Earth Files in your favorite podcast app, and we'll put a link in the show notes for everyone. And I wanted to share with you an email that I received today from an Earth Files viewer with several facets that I thought would be fascinating in, in communicating with you what other people are experiencing and writing about. My name is Beck, and I was watching your latest YouTube broadcast, meaning the one with, uh, where I was talking about, let me know if you have any clicking in your ear. I'm pretty sure that I have an implant in my ear. I do not hear clicking sounds, but what I do hear are subtle static sounds, exactly like when one attempts to find reception on an AM radio dial. I also have this uh, frequency that I feel goes on and off in sometimes in my head. He said, I was standing outside one night, just having a cigarette, and I saw a huge LED orb. It was light and glowing. 
traveling above the trees very slowly. I followed it until it stopped about 20 to 30 yards directly in front of me. The orb turned into a very tall man or humanoid. He was wearing what appeared to be battle armor gear. He was at least 10 feet tall and in a walking stride toward me. I knew that he wasn't physically there, couldn't be there physically. It had to be something like a hologram or I'm looking at someone in another dimension. Immediately, the word Anunnaki came to my head and I am unsure why. Is he telling me that he is Anunnaki? I don't know. I keep on having these feelings and thoughts of battle, war, death, and protection at the same time. It is a strange feeling indeed, and just like that, he was gone. And it reminded me of a case that I read about three or four decades ago in the Himalayas. Uh, and this was about an orb of light that was moving about three feet above the ground, seen by two Americans. And then they saw this sphere of light about the size of a grapefruit. It rotated, and as it rotated, a humanoid came right out of the glowing sphere onto the path with feet on the ground and continued walking. So this may <clears throat> be an insight into a technology that non-humans use when they're here on this planet, that they have some way of transporting uh, in a light technology from place to place. It's a question. And then he continues, I was lying in bed one afternoon watching TV and all of a sudden there was a warm piercing light full of love that came into my room. I sat straight up and asked out loud, where is all of this love coming from? Immediately after that, I had a telepathic download. It was a movie reel from right to left in my mind's eye going by so quickly that I said stop and whoever it was honored my wish, but that's not what I meant. I said again, I don't mean stop. I mean slowly, again, please. The movie reel came again and it was right in the center of my forehead. It didn't slow down at first, but when it got to the last image, it stopped directly in the middle of my third eye. Small squared pixels starting from the right corner connected with other pixels until the image was complete. I found myself standing in a kitchen that I do not recognize. The counter was glowing white. The backsplash was glowing white. The sun rays filled the kitchen full of love and peace, and I could not believe it. No human words can ever describe this kind of peace nor unconditional love. One would have to experience it to know. I knew that I just had the most profound experience of my life and I didn't even have to be nearly dead to have been given such an overwhelming experience. Tears were streaming down my face and it was a love like no other. When I ask multiple times why people have been harmed or even will be harmed for simply trying to get to the truth, the answer is always the same coming from the unseen. It is a threat to their power structure, and it all starts with consciousness. If billions of people could come to a state of advanced consciousness together, the less control these power brokers would have over humans. Thank you for taking the time to read this, Linda. I know you've heard this a lot, but thank you for being such an inspiration. I want to personally thank you for putting your life, your safety, and personal well-being on the line for 43 years for the truth. People don't realize the dangers of this line of work. It is the most dangerous job in the world, and researchers, investigators, and the like can be harassed or eliminated just like that. Sincerely, Beck. And I was... Uh, I was touched by his understanding as well as his experiences that I know so many people, as Dr. John Mack reported, millions. 
who have extraordinary experiences, whether it's other dimensional, whether it is an interaction from an advanced technology. And we have so few places in which we can share what could be the transition from humans always in the dark to finally beginning to be educated about what others in this universe can do and do do, and that all of this to tonight in this particular show, putting it together, facet after facet, as they relate to the uh, Gallup poll, so many people who would fall into the category of being similar to what abductees report. Tim's extraordinary insights from work in Germany that has never been made public and never will be, perhaps, but that at least he, I, and Gaia, and Sid came together, and some of this remarkable information is being shared, and we hope it can go on. Because right now, it is the independent efforts of people that keep making more headway because the longer we wait on the government to tell the truth, the more it seems that everything gets pushed back. Let's hope that April of 2023 will in fact be the month that this big lie ends. And if not, it does not reduce the truth that is being shared at the Earth Files YouTube channel. And in fact, it may be if the government does not finally tell the truth, that it is our independent efforts that you all, you, you wondrous people around the world who continue to come on Wednesday nights and send me tremendous, tremendous letters and insights. And that is what I always hoped that the intersection of Earth files could do on a planet where we need to have a revolution of knowing about our past, our present, and the future in a brand new context, that we're not alone in this universe. We never have been. And that is really what the next, I think, break has to be in the evolution of time. We have to get past this big lie. So thank you for being here tonight. And Ian, I turn it over to you for comments and questions. Linda, well, tonight's a really good uh, evening with a full moon that's being noticed by all of our viewers all around the world. It's an aptly mine, uh, named cold moon, the final full moon of 2022. And, and Ian, also, yeah, sorry, Ian, Brad, who is an amateur astronomer, said that we've been getting uh, texts and, and various things about there was a UFO near the moon. Well, what happened is that there was a transit and it was Mars. Occultation. Oh, occultation. Well, yeah, yeah occult. And that the red, uh, the red glowing object near the moon before the occult was the was Mars. So I just want to contribute that that there is a real astronomical explanation for that red glowing object near the moon tonight. That was Mars. That is Mars. <laughs> We have clear, clear skies tonight. It's a very cold night tonight, so uh, I think that will be visible from, uh, from the UK as well. Uh, Linda, also, tonight's the 70th anniversary since the launching of Apollo 17, the last manned mission to the moon. Yeah. Uh, God okay. rest all of those men and uh, the women who have been in the programs uh, who got to the moon and wherever they are, we are going to enter a whole new next step where we're going to have a base on the moon. It will be permanent. People will go from Earth to the moon on assignments in military or scientists working. It's coming. We will have a base on the moon. I've talked with the aerospace engineers working on these projects. 
Linda, Wayne Burrell says, I love your work, Linda. Do you think there are other human hybrid races on other planets in our galaxy? It is a question that I have thought about too, that if Earth has been the focus of uh, genetic manipulation at a whole lot of levels, like using a laboratory, that it may be that the advanced beings look for certain watery types of planets with certain chemistries in which whatever it is that they want to manipulate and experiment with can be done on planet A for one type of genetic manipulation and maybe planet B for another. If we knew the whole big picture and the whole scope of things, uh, it would probably be astounding. But there's not one question in my mind that we are on a planet that has been used by at least three competing extraterrestrial civilizations for at least 270 million years. There could have been others before then. And that today, whatever is happening on our planet in terms of something changing in the climate, we are on a planet exactly as Tim from Germany said, that the gray beings, the ones with the expanded heads, there's so many different types, that this is a planet that goes through cycles, cycles that can be dangerous to the life uh, that is on it. And there may be other planets where there are not as many uh, physical tsunamis and volcanoes and earthquakes and uh, solar uh, eruptions and all of the things that we are on a planet that have those risks. But it's almost like one of the rules in the universe. If you're going to have something really outstanding and unique, sometimes it always goes in a context of being more difficult and sometimes even dangerous for for us to understand it and to be able to collaborate as one of the life species on earth that if we could relate to each other as remarkable beings, a manipulation of genetics by who knows how many non-humans, but that there have been many people both on the abduction side the science side, the medical side that I have talked to, and they are convinced that there is something about the Homo sapiens sapien, no matter what the experiment started out to be, that beings have found that we are worth trying to keep evolving. And maybe tough love is part of that evolution. If the tall whites and the Nordics know because they can project into time that X coming up in front of us is going to be a micronova or is going to be a tsunami or is going to be a snowball or is going to be whatever they are, then maybe they will help us through something that could be cataclysmic because they want to see us survive. And I just say, that's wonderful. But let us know, while we're still on a planet that is in one piece, with a population of humanity that deserves to know the whole truth. And maybe there will be exoduses. Maybe that is part of being in the universe, that eventually planets and suns, they come to ends. And for populations to go on, somebody has to be technologically advanced enough to take this population to another planet and a system where there will not be that harm or they are going to be removed. These are all of the pieces and facets that you hear in letters from abductees who have been shown movies or they say, we are in a decade or we're in a century where there are going to be a lot of changes. Well, I've heard that from scientists for quite a while, and I've shared it here with the physicist in 2014, who said that by 2030, there would be a huge reduction in population. 
whatever the truth is, that's what I fight for. And I hope, like Beck said, that all of you are here because you would like to evolve with whatever we can learn that can be the truth that can be reported. And in that context, I hope that you will reach out to your friends and your family and ask them to come with you and visit on Wednesday nights so that we can keep growing at least as a Earth Files YouTube in which we are trying as best we can to report the truth even if the truth keeps changing at an evolutionary, revolutionary time. But I think it's very clear we are headed towards some public acknowledgement of other intelligences in this universe. I think it has to be opened up. So uh, that, Ian, is part of the big context of what we're trying to do. Thank you, Linda. I need to do the super chats. We've got a lot of very generous viewers tonight. Dr. Thank Dolores you. Mize, Forest Thank Lady, you. Rebecca Cole, Charlie Ortiz, Terry D, Pam Harris, Wayne Burrell, Yin Yang Gro, Choco Mochino, Sandra Lavender, Fabian Farbiond, Christina Ledesma Jimenez, Jason Oden. And Moonbird isn't with us tonight, but he's sent us a message. He's uh, actually celebrating his 50th birthday in a sensory deprivation tank. Oh my gosh. Moonbird, give us a report next week when you get back. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, Moonbird. Also, and thank you uh, to everybody. Barber's in the chat tonight. He's in San Diego. I spoke with him last night and he's coming to our conference on the, uh, the Portal to Ascension conference on the um, 23rd of April as well. Good. Good, good, good. And uh, let's put in a plug for Portal to Ascension. Uh, if all goes well, then we would have uh, the announcement that has been described on April 23rd that uh, maybe we'll get this announcement about the Webb telescope getting a biological signature from one of the planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system. And it would be great if we were a lot of us uh, together when that happened. So. Uh, Mark, put that uh, week of April on your calendar. All right. Yeah. Okay, Linda, uh, also here's a question from Paula Eaton, who's in the chat tonight. She says, if the government has proof of extraterrestrials experimenting here on Earth for millions of years, what would such proof consist of? I wish I knew all of the details. I don't, and I never have. I was t when the, w the first time that this was said to me <coughs> was in December of 1999. And when I asked the DIA analyst in that seven-hour meeting, um, if the government has proof, what is the proof? And he answered, if I told you, it would be dangerous for both you and for me. So those are uh, some of the blocks that you run into in trying to get to truth. And I accept that that man told me as much truth as he knew. And he's the one who uh, asked for the meeting, uh, had the World Bank man that was his friend, and the World Bank man knew me. He wanted to talk to me because he was retiring. And ever since that December 1999 seven-hour meeting, so much of what he told me has been confirmed in so many ways. But the one part that remains unknown, and I don't know for how much longer, what would the proof be that three extraterrestrial groups manipulated DNA in already evolving primates to create, eventually, Denisovans and Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon Homo sapiens sapien. And it may be something that Tim from Germany said tonight, that the greys that he met with and was so terrified by, but worked with them, 
that they can, that the, that the advanced grays can, with technology, ferret out what each person, each human, each animal, each anything, what is the progenitor sequence? Where does the genetic fabric, where does it, when you look at it going backwards in time, where does it lead? And it may be that that's the big secret that the government knows and has proof of exactly what produced the Denisovans, the Neanderthal, and then Cro-Magnon. And why did it happen? Who was controlling that? Was it part of a war? I've also been told that, that the genetic manipulation of various species on this planet by extraterrestrial biological entities for the last 270 million at least years, some of what has happened has been in conflict. So using genetic manipulation in wars among advanced extraterrestrials. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like taking the 16-layer chess game and turning it into 64 layers with no guide and no help. So that's why we need to keep struggling for as much truth as we can from each other. And for those who have military backgrounds, aerospace backgrounds, medical backgrounds, who can help me by you sending me your firsthand knowledge, even if I can't quote you or give names, but getting information helps. All right, Ian. Okay, we've got a question from EJ. He says, what relationship are the UFOs and aliens to African spiritual deities and the possessions that are happening in Africa and the Caribbean? Those are good questions for which I have no answer at all. Uh, I think it, that is an extension of, of what I was just uh, answering. It, that if in 270 million years that there have been three extraterrestrial civilizations fighting with each other over this planet and they can do invisibility, they can take on different bodies, the skinwalker kind of thing, that they have the ability to move point to point on the earth as well as in outer space, uh, that they can have a technology that are these beams that appear to be, or spheres wherever it begins, a technology in which you can transport yourself in light and come out of the light and be in a mountain. So it's very difficult. We don't even have a language. We, we really do not, and at least in the public. The government might, but the public does not, have the language even to ask the questions, let alone discuss and hypothesize answers. Remember when Tim said that even those large, enlarged, the back of their head grays, that particular type, as advanced as they are, that when they would do communications in, uh, through something like an iPad, and there, it would translate, that's where he was talking about a screen, and there would be translation, I assume, between English and the, those particular gray beings' language. And then he would say they would suddenly get translations that made no sense. And then they would have to go back and work with the grays to go through what is it they're not understanding, what did the grays really mean. And it reminded me very much of the work of Jim Sparks, an abductee who uh, wrote uh, a book uh, called The Keepers. And uh, Jim uh, also said the same thing, that he was taken, he thought, onto a craft, put in front of something like a computer, a screen, and he would be taught the particular gray, that was also a particular gray, a gray language, and they would show him how it fit to, uh, in his case, English and the alphabet. And that 
he, he wanted to know why was he being taught? What is it that the beings wanted from him? And every time he would ask those kinds of questions, here's the kind of answer he would get to show you what it is like to communicate with extraterrestrials, I guess. He would be wanting to rebel against doing letters or numbers and comparing them. And they would take him back, and that's the issue. Sometimes it was on a screen, but it was mostly he thought he thought it was in his mind, but sometimes it was so vivid and so real that he thought they were literally moving him in time to one or two or three different lives in which his soul matrix had been in these other lives. And if we are dealing with intelligences this advanced, that they can manipulate, move in time, move point to point in time, chop time up, take something from the future, put it into the past, past to the future, all of it all mixed up. Humans, we humans, we, we don't have any context. We, we are literally the uneducated ones in all of this because we've been deliberately kept dumb and blind. And the uh, answer that everybody gives about why would that be is because that there have been a lot of beings, human and other, that have controlled this planet largely by keeping the growing human population completely ignorant about the truth. So hopefully we are at a time where that's going to change. Um, and the, when you think about school and you think about first grade and first graders at least having only one language to learn, imagine if the future is going to be where you would go in a spaceship to going on to a planet in a space force and you're given maybe a dozen different iPads and each one is a different extraterrestrial language that you have to study before you get to another planet. Something like that is probably going to be part of the future. So, all right, Ian. We have last of the finest did the audience tonight in the super chat, in the chats. He's uh, an experiencer who's also served at Eglin and also served in uh, Germany. He says that when he lived in Germany for a year and a half in the service, there were some interesting things in the sky of that country. He also says that he got to see UAP when he was very young and forgot all about it when he was at Eglin, and uh, until he was at Eglin. And when he was, um, when he was four years old, uh, he had the experience with his mother, and they never talked about it until uh, just a few months ago. And what was the experience? Can he tell us? Apparently, he's already spoken to you, so you know you are familiar with uh, with some of his story. But uh, if that rings any bells, that he was um, working at Eglin, and uh, and anyway, he's in the chat. He had experiences before he went to Eglin, and also I believe he was um, had some experience at Eglin as well. Well, there have been uh, many, several people who have told me uh, experiences in Eglin. So uh, it, it, send me an email to make sure that I've got. The name and contact again, but I will say that uh, when Richard Nixon was, uh, I think, I'm trying to remember if he was vice president or president, but I've heard this from somebody who w was a friend of their family, of the Jackie Gleason, and told me, Linda, it is true that Nixon took Jackie Gleason to Eglund Air Force Base in Florida and showed him extraterrestrial bodies preserved in tubes mounted vertically on a wall. And in another room that was a larger room, there were half a dozen different craft of different sizes. And he said, that is true. And the people who have tried to say that Jackie Gleason made it up, they're the ones who 
are coming from counter intel because they didn't want anybody in the public to know. So I'm sharing that with you because it's been described to me that way. And I'm curious if uh, anybody else with an Eglund Air Force Base background has any firsthand information about there being something like a museum of bodies and tubes and uh, craft uh, underground in that base. I'd, I'd love to know if anybody has any other experiences to back up uh, further the Jackie Gleason and Nixon being there. Okay, Ian, and send me the uh, email that you hey. just referenced. Right, and we'll um, we'll keep in touch. We'll see if he's um, if he's able to uh, to keep to uh, give us any more information on that. We've got a question from Choco Machino in Mexico City, I believe. He's in Mexico anyway. He says, Linda, I had two instances of seeing unknown strange symbols as I awake from sleep for about one minute. The second time started glowing blue, like reading. Do you know where I can read more about this? Happened about two years ago. Can he describe, is he there now? Can he describe the symbol or symbols? Well, yeah. Yes, if you're there, Choco Machino, give us, a, give us more information or contact us at earthfires at earthfires.com. But I was thinking, yes, Jim Sparks about the symbols. Well, and there are two uh, languages that have been identified for me over the last 43 years as having a source of extraterrestrial civilization for real. Sanskrit, Sanskrit, I have been told by half a dozen people, has been identified as extraterrestrial, as an extraterrestrial uh, based or evolved language. And another one is Tibet and Bhutan. And if you go to a computer and type in, um, I want to see the language of Tibet, I want to see the language of Bhutan, you will be in a whole new visual lines and dots. And where else have lines and dots played a significant role, the Mayans in the Yucatan. Look on a planet at the distance between Tibet and in the Himalayas and uh, Bhutan and the Yucatan. And yet there have been uh, probably, I don't know, there have been several people who have either been abductees or they have had some uh, military information in which it was tying Bhutan and Tibet to the genetic experiment, that's the way it was explained to me, that ETs like to do genetic experiments in pieces of planets. And they like things like islands, so they're not attached to any other experiments, or peninsulas that a peninsula comes out into the water from land, and that is also a good place for ETs to put an experiment. And that was described to me as the explanation for the development of the Mayans, that the Mayans were a genetic experiment from the Bhutan, Tibet area of the Himalayas on the other side of the world. And the uh, language, what you see, the dots and the lines in the Mayan relates to the Tibet and Bhutan languages. And if you begin to just do a check on that for yourself, educate yourself on that, you will begin to see like a whole new horizon begins to expand. It's happened to me several times. You you began to understand, oh my Lord, I see this is the exact symbol here that's all the, completely on the other side of the world. And once you get into that mode, I think it's very exciting and that every single thing that you see, touch, read, hear begins to, you, you find yourself being led to other uh, insights, and those insights are that we have a completely different history than we have been told. Okay, Eric, Ian. 
We've heard back from uh, Choco Machino. He says, I'm here, but the symbols were really strange. I've never seen anything like that. I've drawn one of them and I can send you the picture. So we'll wait for further information. Yeah, can he, or can he email right now? Can you sit down and give me as many symbols as you remember vividly in your mind's eye? And then email directly to me at earthfiles at earthfiles.com. I have a uh, shelf that has about these many books, notebooks, all having to do with what have been sent to me as symbols that people have seen inside of craft, have seen on other planets, uh, that uh, the so-called angel writing is in that category. It's, it, it's incredible. And I would love to see the symbols that you would draw that I can compare to what I have. And on that note, we have reached the bottom of the hour. It has been so fun to share with you tonight um, my own private interview piece with Tim from Germany. That was uh, an extraordinary experience to talk with him for two full days on camera for the new Truth Hunters series. And that I hope that you will uh, all go to Gaia and see the whole series. Because Tim has information that not many people do have. And that's what we need to hear and learn. On that note, I'm going to see you next Wednesday. And uh, I'm going to have a very special other interview next Wednesday. And uh, everybody uh, who feels like it, uh, dress up a little bit for Christmas. And we'll also celebrate being with each other before a holiday that is dedicated to peace and love. And I would just add, may we all, all try for truth. I love you. See you next week. Turn on closed captions for YouTube videos by clicking the white CC button on the lower right. The default language for Linda's videos is English. If you would like to see the captions in another language, click on the white settings button next to the CC button. Select subtitle CC and then select auto translate. I don't have to put them in select a language or, uh, bind them anywhere they love and the captions will now appear in that language sort of gone through and they will hold their heads I never had a cat do that before and they'll pull against the comb helping me get out snarls and I think it's the best they've ever been